After Frieza arrived on Earth, everyone got to see how truly strong Goku's grown. And it looks like he's not slowing down at all. Where is his training going to take him here? And how will the others catch up? We'll be seeing all that and more in this part 4 of What If Goku Became Kami. Realizing he's probably not going to catch up with Goku in any other way, Piccolo does have one idea. An idea that wasn't really his, but one that was suggested to him and one that he realized would work really well. Although, he's going to have to swallow his pride for it. Kami actually did get in contact with Piccolo. If Piccolo wants more strength, there is a good way to get that, and it's been a long time coming. He and Kami could just reunite. They don't even realize it's Namekian fusion, but Goku does once he hears about it. Kami thinks it's time by now. Goku's training has gone well enough, and it looks like he's going to make a good Kami. Kami's taught him everything he can. In this way, he'll live on even longer through Piccolo. Kami knew this day would come eventually. This is good for everyone. It's good for him. It's good for Piccolo. It's good for Goku. Especially because this will officially make Goku Guardian, no longer a Guardian in training. And Kami wants this to happen too. Piccolo is pretty reluctant about it, but he's going to be the host and grow stronger from it, so he's convinced to do so. And Kami says his goodbyes to everyone. He tells Goku that he's proud of his growth, remembering back to the first day that Goku came up to the lookout. He always expected great things of Goku, and he's glad Earth will be in good hands with the new Guardian. But Kami says he won't be gone for good. When he and Piccolo merge, a new Namekian will be born, essentially. And he hopes Piccolo keeps watch over Goku to make sure that he's doing his job. But Goku says he has nothing to worry about, thanking Kami for everything. The two Namekians merge, leaving behind a much stronger nameless Namekian and a brand new guardian, Goku. He's officially Kami, no longer a guardian in training. And thankfully, it's not like they need to worry about the Dragon Balls because now Goku can create his own set. That problem was solved before it even existed. But most importantly, now that he's officially Kami, Goku will need to be a lot more serious about this. And Piccolo's there, and he does feel a little bit different. Goku can sense Kami within him, and Piccolo could feel that. This power that he got is great, but also part of him is a concern because now, Goku's Guardian of Earth. He knows that Goku's powerful and is a great warrior, but how effective is he going to be as Guardian? He might hang around Goku a little bit more just to make sure he's doing everything right. And Goku's not too worried. He's also looking forward to it. He's going to be up here all the time. Watching over Earth's fine, but he could train to his heart's content up here. Plus, he's even renovated the Room of Spirit in time with Kami. He doesn't know how often he's going to use it, but now that he's going to age so much slower and probably live a lot longer too, using the Room of Spirit in time could be pretty helpful. So it would be a shame if he was limited to two years only in there. And at some point he actually does go in there to test it out. Heading in with Piccolo actually. Although the timing's not really that great. He's supposed to be watching over Earth. He thought maybe a day in there wouldn't be too bad, but the exact day he goes in, King Cold and the Ginyu Force to send on Earth too. Thankfully there are other people on the lookout. Chi Chi and Gohan are watching over too. And she's not even surprised. Of course she has to take responsibility for Goku here. But this isn't really that big of a deal. All she does is simply teleport to King Yemma, and then with one powerful jump, she jumps across the entirety of Snake Way, landing on King Kai's planet, telling everyone there to go to Earth right now. Just as King Cold and the Ginyu Force land, Chi Chi Tan and Krillin are there to greet them, with the Yamcha and Chaozu also showing up too after hearing about this. Now, they might be a bit concerned at first, realizing that this is Frieza's father, obviously, but it's been a while since Frieza died, actually, and they've had more than enough training with King Kai. Now with access to Kaioken, they should actually be able to win this battle. The Ginyu Force actually isn't too hard to fight, Sure, Ginyu is almost able to swap bodies with someone, and Goldo's time stop is actually pretty powerful. But other than that, the fastest thing in the universe, aka Birder, he isn't actually so fast in comparison to them. Raccoon and Jace aren't too hard to fight either, and same goes for Ginyu. Goldo might be able to live a little bit longer just because of his time stopping ability, but he's greatly outmatched in terms of power. They don't even need to use Kaioken here against the Ginyu Force. And as for Ken Cold himself, they're not going to let him power up to full power like Goku did with Frieza. No, they just immediately jump in the battle at their full power, using Kaioken to its max. Let's say they each have access to times 10 by now. And with how much it buffs them, they're able to collectively overpower him pretty easily. And the battle ends before it even really starts. A few hours later, Goku exits the time chamber with Piccolo, a lot stronger than before. He sees Popo watching over Goten as Gohan's training on the lookout alone. And he asks where Chi-Chi went. Oh yeah, Gohan says that Frieza's father showed up or something. Wait, what? Goku and Piccolo panic and quickly rush over to the edge of the lookout. And as they look down at the surface, they see there was never really a problem in the first place. Although, Chi-Chi's pretty mad at Goku. So is Piccolo. But Goku says Piccolo's to blame too. He went in the time chamber too, didn't he? Goku has to figure out a way for him to train while also being able to watch over Earth at the same exact time. In the time chamber, King Cold wasn't strong enough to be sensed within there. Now sure, if someone really strong came to Earth, he would have been able to sense it within that same room. But he had no idea King Cold even showed up. And had he not been as outmatched as he was, that could have been a disaster. So he's not going to go in the room of spirit in time for a little bit. Which is kind of unfortunate, but he's got to get used to this job. A few months go by. And seemingly out of nowhere, Goku feels a really strong and strange presence on the lookout. And it's not exactly malicious, but he's fearful of it. Not as in he fears for his life, but it feels like there's someone who's higher up than him there. Like he's their subordinate. A man calls out Goku's name and greets him. 
Piccolo is there too, just as fearful. And the two of them immediately can recognize who this guy is. It's the Supreme Kai. Goku's heard about him in Otherworld. But why is he here? In the mortal realm, no less. Shin says he's heard a lot about Goku. And don't worry, it's good things. He sees that Goku is now officially Guardian of Earth. And he can tell that Goku's grown pretty strong. The reason he's come here is because he actually senses the threat. He doesn't know when it's going to show up, but it's probably going to be years from now. And he thinks Goku would be a good candidate to train for that. Obviously, Goku has no idea of what he's talking about, but Shin says that's fine. He didn't expect Goku to know about this, and he tells him about Majin Buu. Thankfully, Majin Buu's not showing up anytime soon. But Shin does want to let Goku know of that threat because he's probably going to show up on Earth if anything. And even if not, Shin wants to make sure there's a strong enough warrior out there. He heard this guy was able to defeat Frieza relatively easily. And he's making a lot of moves in Otherworld. Even compared to the other warriors there, Goku's one of the strongest that he's heard of. Although, not the strongest. There are some people in Otherworld that are above him. But unlike those warriors, Goku's actually alive. He could fight here in the mortal realm, which is where a threat would actually occur. And not just that, Shin is curious to see how strong this mortal can grow. It's such a strange thing too, a Saiyan from Earth taking a godly position like this. Goku intrigues him. Goku says he would like to go there, but he has no way of watching over Earth while he's gone. Chi Chi and Piccolo could do it, but the whole point of him being Guardian is that he has to do this. If only he had a crystal ball like Baba where he could just watch through it. He feels like he even remembers Kami using one at some point. And Shin says that should be no problem. They know of other Kais that are able to create that, and even they can create that on their own probably. Especially if someone like Baba is able to do that, it shouldn't be too hard to work out. And Goku can watch over Earth from the sacred world of Kais. Okay, well that's great, but what about getting back to Earth? Sure, he could use instant transmission, but it's going to take a while to lock onto someone here. Shin says that also won't be a problem. How do they think he got here? He has an even better ability than instant transmission, one that allows him to teleport to any planet without needing a key signature. Now, Goku doesn't need too much convincing. He really does want to do this, but he also doesn't want to leave his responsibility here. Although, this is a nice way to work around that. He'll be able to watch over Earth even from the sacred world of Kai's. And if he needs to come back, he can get there instantly with the Kai Kai. Shin and Kibito could bring him back, or he could just learn the technique himself. Goku gets to the sacred world of Kai's, and Kibito isn't so sure about this. He doesn't like the idea that Immortal's here. And Shin even tries to get Goku to pull the Z sword, but he's not able to do that just yet. Kibito doubts he'll ever be able to do so. And as they watch Goku train, they do notice something strange. Shin can sense a strange thing inside of Goku. He feels the presence of some sort of dormant virus within there. And he asks Goku to let him check him for a second. And as he confirms it, he tells Kibito to heal Goku. Goku doesn't even know what just happened, but Shin explains. There was some virus within him, and he didn't know if it was going to become active anytime soon. But it might have, and it might have killed Goku. He was just cured of the heart virus, and he doesn't even realize it. Goku can already tell coming here was a great choice. And he's excited for the training up ahead. Back on Earth, there is another person we kind of need to cover. That's Vegeta. He does obviously stay there, and he trains a lot too. Trying to surpass Goku, of course. Piccolo is surprised that Goku even saw something within him. But now that he has Kami's mind too, he could see what Goku meant. Vegeta isn't completely irredeemable. And Piccolo has a really new outlook on life. It's a whole new view on everything, actually. And a huge respect for Goku too, thanks to what came from Kami. He always did admire Goku's strength as a warrior, but now he could see what Kami saw within Goku too. So, it's more than just recognizing that Goku's strong. And thankfully, unlike Goku, Piccolo can actually train in the time chamber as much as he wants. He ages a lot slower, and he might even start eating the same herb that Goku ate. But regardless, Namekians live a lot longer and age a lot slower in general. So, the time chamber? It won't really be too big of an issue for him to use. Especially if he's going to want to push himself more. Although, he wonders what Vegeta is trying to achieve here. He knows that Goku's so far ahead of him, so what is he going for? Goku's gone back and forth between Earth and the Sacred World of Kai's, but one day, he shows up back on the lookout. As he was watching over Earth, he saw something that concerned him. It's small right now, but it could spiral out of control. There was an attack in some city, and he can't sense the presence there, but he did see something that really concerned him. One of the attackers was wearing the symbol of the Red Ribbon Army. He assumes these might be androids, considering he can't sense them. And he gathers everyone together as they go down to the city. Goku can obviously handle this himself, but he does want to see what the others are capable of. He's there with Chi-Chi, Piccolo, and Gohan. With Krillin eventually catching up too, even Goten comes to watch, but he's not going to fight here. Piccolo says this will be a good test of his power. He doesn't know how strong these androids will be, but he's confident he could beat them especially after all his training in the time chamber. It's Android 17 and 18 that they're up against. In case you didn't notice, there's no time travel here. They weren't warned about the androids, they weren't warned about the heart virus, and Goku never succumbed to the heart virus either. Piccolo starts the battle by fighting Android 17. And it's a pretty unfair match. Because with all the training that Piccolo's done so far, plus the fact that he's still merged with Kami here, he's definitely stronger than normal even if he hasn't merged with Nail too. But on top of that, without Trunks disrupting the timeline, the androids might even be a little bit weaker here too only as strong as they were in the future timeline. And while Piccolo fights Android 17, 18 watches on. Not really expecting a big battle, but she's surprised to see that her brother's being beaten. And she's about to jump in and help him, but someone else shows up there. Having sensed this battle going on, Vegeta flew in. Perfect, Kakarot's here too. So it seems there's another threat here on Earth, 
which means he can go all out if he wants, right? Well, yeah, but Goku advises against it. They don't know how strong these opponents are. And Vegeta says to stop worrying. He's unlocked a power so great that it'll make Kakarot look weak in comparison. After all this time, he's finally discovered it. His hate and resentment towards himself allowed him to transform. Go beyond his current state of being and surpass Kakarot. What is he talking about? He looks over at Android 18 and tells her to watch closely, as he then turns back to Goku and begins transforming. He's surrounded by a brilliant golden light, and his power soars dramatically. After all this time, finally, Vegeta's become the first Super Saiyan. And he starts fighting Android 18. He's had so many years of gravity training, plus all those boosts and power he's had from his previous battles. And he decides to show it off against Android 18. Piccolo finishes his fight with Android 17 and destroys the Android completely. It wasn't too big of a deal, and if Vegeta starts having trouble, he could defeat Android 18 as well. Vegeta is surprisingly able to keep up with Android 18, but she does have infinite energy, and she actually does have a little bit of an advantage in terms of strength. The power of Super Saiyan is amazing, but they could pretty easily see that Vegeta's not going to be able to defeat Android 18, which will probably be a huge blow to his pride. But Piccolo has an idea of how to finish this quickly, in a way that won't piss Vegeta off. He just has to wait for the right moment. Goku's interested to watch how Vegeta's fighting in Super Saiyan. That form is interesting and he wonders how it would benefit him. And at one point in the battle, he launches a powerful blast at Android 18. Now, this blast wouldn't have killed him, but Piccolo is able to add some of his own power to the blast very covertly, in a way that Vegeta won't be able to see. This boosts the power of the blast greatly, and it destroys Android 18. And this makes Vegeta feel like he was the one to actually do it. Piccolo thinks this guy's drunk off power, but it's better to at least give him this win instead of making him even more angry. And Vegeta's satisfied here. It was a tough battle, but it showed off the power of Super Saiyan. And he thinks he won all alone. Piccolo has to pretend to be impressed, but Goku actually is impressed. Yeah, Vegeta's not that strong in comparison to them, but he does want to learn more about Super Saiyan. Although he's probably going to have to practice that on the Sacred World of Kais. He thanks everyone for helping out. They're able to get the Dragon Balls and restore the damage done by the androids, but thankfully it was pretty secluded. And Goku immediately goes back to the Sacred World of Kais, with Vegeta pretty surprised because he thought Goku might have wanted to train with him. Wasn't he impressed by the power of Super Saiyan? He should be begging Vegeta to show him that power. But instead, Piccolo's going to be the one to actually train with Vegeta. He is interested in Vegeta's power, and Piccolo kind of does need a training partner. He's still far above Vegeta, but this could still be beneficial for the both of them. And maybe Vegeta would like the Room of Spirit in time, even if they only go in for a day or two. And that's exactly what they do. Also, during this arc, if you could even really call it that, Trunks is born eventually. Vegeta and Bulma are still a thing here, so even though future Trunks never appeared, Trunks still exists. Although, one really interesting thing to note is that Cell's never gonna appear here. At least the one from the alternate timeline. Without Trunks ever traveling to the past, there's no time machine. And there's no timeline where Cell steals the time machine and comes to this timeline. But the present version of Cell, the one that's in Jero's lab still being developed, He's never found, so Cell's still going to develop here, but it's going to be a while before he awakens. Just something to keep in mind, though. While the threat was avoided right now, who knows what's going to happen years from now. Goku continues his training on the Sacred World of Kais. He still isn't able to pull the Z-Sword yet. Even when using Max Kaioken, it's not enough. So, he changes his training a bit, and starts training for Super Saiyan. After observing Vegeta use it just a little bit, he was able to figure out how Vegeta achieved it. Also, because Vegeta gave a monologue about how he achieved it. And it doesn't take too long for Goku. Within about a month, Goku's able to unlock Super Saiyan for himself, and it's not really that great. Like, yeah, it gives him a great boost in power, but he has more of a boost in power with Max Kaioken. And sure, Kaioken is draining, but so is Super Saiyan right now. Goku can push Kaioken further, and with the more training he has from it, it's becoming more and more efficient. He wonders if Super Saiyan will ever be useful. Well, maybe he'll just have to work on making this more efficient too. And who knows, he might even be able to merge it with Kaioken. But that's probably going to take a while. Thankfully, he has all the time in the world. As Goku looks towards new types of training, this is where we leave off for now. What'd you guys think about this part? What's gonna happen next time? Leave any thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.